All right, so uh, I, I, I do have a lot of co to cover, and I, uh, I promise you I will be talking about naps. It's at the tail end because it's going to make a whole lot more sense when I tie together what we're doing for uh, Android for Work, which has some very interesting identity uh, implications. And so with that, let me jump into what Android for Work is. It, there's, there's a lot of different, in fact, there's five different API surfaces just for EMM. So there's a lot to take in. I'm going to be going through this really quickly. And the identity portion is, is just one facet of it. Uh, but the fundamentals here are we're addressing a lot of long asked enterprise requests on Android. We're taking care of app distribution uh, for enterprise. We're standardizing the management of that. And this is across the whole ecosystem. So we're doing a lot of things with a lot of different partners. In fact, these are just the launch partners. I'm working with hundreds of partners literally right now. Uh, a lot of them are not even on this, uh, you know, Ping for instance, uh, and many of the other identity uh, partners that we have. The, the point here is this is, not, uh, this is not Google's EMM, although we do have an EMM with Google Apps, but uh, most of my time is spent uh, from an Android team perspective with the third-party EMMs that, that you know and, and love or, or, or hate, uh, depending on what, what side of the uh, fence you, you might be on. But it, these EMMs are the most widely deployed way of managing mobile devices in the enterprise. Uh, the device makers are part of this. They're, they're adding capabilities in, into their devices. Uh, application uh, vendors, this, is, this represents all the different Android application developers out there, and many of whom uh, are very interested in, uh, in the NAP story and in identity and in management, and we'll talk through some of those capabilities here, as well as that we have some new networking capabilities that, that we recently put into Android for per app uh, VPN, et, et cetera. So what I first want to talk about is what's known as a work profile. Work profiles are, you can think of them as being logged into a second user without having to log out from your primary user. So that second user is known as a work profile. The application data is completely separate. Uh, you, you'll see when you uh, are in a launcher that you've got this special work badge on that application. That tells you that it's related to your work profile or work user and that the enterprise is managing that, as opposed to your personal apps that the enterprise in a work profile scenario does not manage or have insight into. Uh, you've got freedom and privacy on the personal side, and only these work applications and, and data are being managed. Uh, we, we also have an Android for Work app for older versions of Android uh, prior to Lollipop or uh, devices that don't yet support the work profile. And so we're using this, this similar kind of badged metaphor here, but it's, it's uh, being done over the top. And uh, probably the easiest way of understanding this is I've got framework level things that I'm doing to deliver you know, the work profile in uh, specifically on those work profile enabled devices, Lollipop and Grader, whereas uh, I can go all the way back to Ice Cream Sandwich Without the framework level APIs, these are application level APIs, and there are a number of new capabilities involved there. On, the, on Lollipop and Grader with the work profile, in general, there's no modified application, there's no wrapping, there's, there's, there's nothing like this that's required by a third party app developer. So it's far superior in the long run, but in the, uh, in the short term, in order to allow older Android devices to have these capabilities, uh, th there are other uh, SDKs and capabilities that uh, app developers, especially enterprise app developers, may want to take advantage of with the Android for Work app version. So again, they're, they're two different, you're never going to have both at the same time. You're, you're using the work profile or the Android for Work app depending on what uh, uh, what level of Android uh, and device capabilities you've got. And then we also have this third model. That this is for a corporate-owned, corporate-managed device where 
there is no need for separation between personal and work. And, and this, is, uh, th this is a model that a lot of people are familiar with already, the difference being that we've exposed a bunch of new APIs to EMMs to enable this to, to happen. So that's a work managed device. Uh, we include a bunch of productivity tools, not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but th this is part of the program. Uh, one of the most important things to understand here is that we're changing the distribution model so that now you've got a badged Play Store inside that work profile or inside that managed device. And what you see there is completely managed by enterprise IT as far as which apps are available for installation. We've got a Play for Work uh, store. And right now, you have to be part of the program to, to do anything inside uh, the, the Play for Work store, we're, we're going to be opening this up so that you can uh, start seeing and uh, exploring it a little bit more uh, without having uh, become a part of the program. And uh, for those of you that are app developers, you know, there are four big stories here to, to be thinking about. So not only can you as an app developer expose uh, anything for configurability, whether that's a policy that an enterprise could set or just provisioning information. Uh, we've also got an authorized path so that, that EMM can set that and nobody else uh, can set that. And I'll, I'll give a few examples of that uh, later in the, uh, in the deck. Uh, the ability of completely separating that enterprise data without the app developer having to worry about it. So I, I've, I've only got one APK, I'll, I'll use the example of I've got a box app and I've installed it on the personal side and the work side. The personal side instance doesn't have any knowledge of the existence of the set of application data for the work side. It's just like two different users as far as the app is concerned, doesn't have that awareness, doesn't have any mixture of that data. And so that, that provides a very clean answer for application developers that need to be able to support uh, multiple accounts where there's a personal and work implication and you've got this big headache as far as how you manage the, the, the data. Uh, the identity piece is, is really nice. Not only do we support uh, Google authentication, uh, which you know, just, it's, it's there, it's available, but uh, we also have uh, the ability, of course, any app developer can support uh, all the standard kinds of flows and some of, the, some of the new things we're talking about with apps and whatnot, but, but also even the Google accounts for the enterprise side, I'll be talking a little bit more about this in uh, about halfway through, uh, those can even be front-ended on uh, the customer's choice of IDP. And then this is new. Um, it's just been enabled for US and Canada, group licensing. So uh, obviously for free apps, this isn't a consideration. But for paid apps, it wasn't possible uh, in the past to bulk purchase licenses and have the enterprise assign and reassign licenses. This is all part of Android for work. So this is, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but this is a helpful way of kind of looking at all the different things that we're talking about. What I want to point out, though, is that Android Fork is a big tent. We're not, we're not a competitor to, for instance, Samsung Knox. We, we work with Samsung Knox. Customers can choose Samsung Knox as their deployment vehicle for the, the parts of Android for Work that, that make sense for them. Or if you're doing a true BYOD solution, and you need to be able to support multiple device manufacturers. You, know, you can use just the free Android for Work uh, solution and uh, the the point here is there are multiple ways of instantiating this and you know we're we're not saying all right a, a, abandon everything else that you've been doing on Android we're creating some new options for you so let me talk let me dive in just a little bit more to what is this user experience like so again you're seeing your personal and work applications whether they're badged which tells you that they're in work or not the the, uh, there, there are a few modifications that have to be made by the uh, launcher, and we've we published that to the major uh, launcher vendors. Not all of them have updated yet. Obviously, a lot of the device manufacturers uh, have uh, have to update their launchers as well, uh, and and they're in the process of of doing that. But uh, this badge persists throughout the uh, the UX. So when you see recent apps. When you see notifications, uh, when you're, and, and even I want to point out here, even when you're uh, 
uh, sharing data between the work and the personal side. Uh, now it's completely under the control of, of EMM policy for anything that's going from work to personal and there, there's uh, interfaces for management of that. When you're going from the personal side to work, uh, we've got this simple uh, cross-profile intent picker where you click on the work side and uh, then you're able to share to those uh, work applications. So again, all the way through, uh, you, you're, you're seeing this, uh, there's your notifications, you're, you're, you're seeing these uh, consistently there to help you understand your, where your work identity is, is and applications are being expressed and where you're just dealing with the, uh, your personal uh, identity and applications in the, uh, in the, in the primary space. Um, Okay, so let, let's talk uh, about the Android for Work app user experience. There's a, there's a few changes. We're still seeing the badged icons, but uh, obviously it's an older version of Android. The notifications uh, and other things that we can bake into the framework aren't going to be there, uh, but we've, we've brought over as much as we can, and uh, we, we provide the ability of, in the, in the same way that we can wipe the uh, just the enterprise apps and data, we can do the same thing with the Android for Work app and uh, leave the rest of the device uh, unaffected. So let's talk a little bit more now about how identity fits in uh, to the Google for Work application. So you, you need, in order to use Google Play, in order to be able to log in to your work account to see the specific Google for Work apps that are enabled for your domain, you've got to log in with a Google account. And the managed Google account process, what we've done is we've taken, in the past, you had to be a Google Apps customer to be able to manage your Google domains. If you had an employee that wanted to create a Google account using, your, using their work email, they could go in and, and create that. And even if they left the company, you wouldn't be in charge of their account. Uh, they, they would still have that Google account with, you, with their old corporate email address. And uh, in, unless you became a Google Apps for Work customer and, and claimed that domain and turned that into what we call a conflict account, you wouldn't have any control or visibility as to what's going on there. As part of Google for, uh, or sorry, Android for Work, there's a need for you to create and manage the Google accounts that get used with Play. And the beauty about this is not only do we have all the functionality that's already there for uh, Google for Work customers in terms of uh, identity and single sign-on integration and Active Directory synchronization and, and, uh, and management, but you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to be a Google Apps, Apps customer in order to uh, utilize these services. So the uh, facilitation there is at no cost, and it's, it's really the same process that you'd go through as a Google Apps customer. You claim your domain, you, you create your admin account, and you get a token that you would give to your EMM to be able to manage uh, your uh, domain and the accounts in your domain. So the registration process, really straightforward. If you've ever done this for Google Apps, it's the same process. You're, you're going to set up an admin account, and that admin is, is going to uh, take that account and uh, do domain validation. There's, there's a number of uh, ways to do this. It's very simple and straightforward. It, it, it does take uh, a little bit of work, but uh, once that's uh, done, then you've, got, you've claimed your domain, you've, you've proven that you own that domain, and you get a binding token that will allow you to connect with an EMM. On the, uh, on the identity side, uh, you, you get this ability of managing those Google accounts. If you, if you want to uh, front end with your SAML domain, uh, uh, with your SAML IDP for your domain, you can, you can do that. We recommend that. Uh, we, we support password sync, uh, but uh, that's not the only way of doing it. Uh, and then the, the Active Directory sync can be used to automate the creation of these accounts so that you're not creating them one by one. Uh, oh, and uh, one quick mention on that, the directory APIs that exist, uh, same, same APIs for, for management, those can be delegate, delegated to your EMM. So let, let me talk about NAPS a little bit. And uh, I, I noticed that when I searched for NAPS, uh, now uh, some of this got 
said this morning and, and, and all my fun got stolen, except that I just love the uh, National Association of Professional Pet Sitters website. That is uh, memorable. So it's, it's, it's the one on the bottom, uh, openid.net, working group naps, and uh, uh, John promises to have more materials on the mailing list soon. Uh, what we have been looking at very closely on the Android side is what can we do to enable the native experience to be as seamless as possible, avoid app flips, avoid unnecessary uh, user experience steps that, uh, that re really, frankly, shouldn't be uh, uh, needed. And you know, first of all, yes, you know, Naps can always work with system browser. That's the fallback. You know, we've, we've seen in sessions earlier today uh, how that can be done. But it's, it's definitely possible. And I'm showing account manager here also because I want to show that you know, the work accounts are, in fact, separate. Now, you don't have to use account manager. Uh, and our uh, recommended approach may or may not include account manager because there are other ways uh, Android with intents can, can accomplish these things. The, the, the point here is uh, we've looked very closely at uh, what it would take to implement the NAP spec on Android. We think that it's possible to do this all the way back to Froyo even without having to uh, do a lot of major uh, uh, work. It really, it's, it's more about making recommendations for app developers and, and enterprises and identity providers so that there's a, a simple, repeatable pattern that everyone's using on Android with the existing uh, mechanisms that we already have. So stay tuned for that. Um, I, want, I talked a little bit about the uh, application configuration. We call it app restrictions. Uh, one of the cool things about this, and I'm showing a, a tool that, that, that we've got uh, where we're demoing uh, some sample app restrictions, like Office Suite, for instance, has one that's really simple. If you want to not be able to uh, interact, you know, turn on the, uh, the cloud file uh, support in that app, you, you set that app restriction as an EMM, and, and that magically disappears off the menu. Uh, you could have the same app installed on the personal side and, and uh, no restriction whatsoever. Uh, but you can also use it for pr uh, provisioning. So here is an example for uh, the, the PIM app that uh, comes with Android for Work, and you're, you're actually provisioning the email uh, address and, and other key information so that that can work, so that you're just simplifying the user experience. The MM can do all of this. So when we say app restrictions, think app configuration as opposed to policy. The app developer is the one that creates the schema for what can be configured and exposes it. The EMMs get that information from the manifest, but not uh, directly, they get it through play when you upload your, uh, your application as a developer. Okay, uh, thank you very much, and I think we might have time for a question or two. Hey. Is any of this functionality gonna be added to Chrome OS? So Chrome OS for work? Uh, well, let's, I guess, let's break down what part of this you're, you're looking for. The work side, so like, you know, one account on my Chromebook for both work and personal. There are, well, th there are ways to, to do this today with, uh, there, there's, uh, there's a Chrome feature that was recently added that's essentially the same as when you're in your personal browser and you, you, you log in and switch between, you know, you can have different windows there. Um, that, that is about as close as we've got right now. I'd, I'd be interested, because my group, uh, we, we basically work uh, very closely with the Chrome team, uh, the cr Chrome for work, the, you know, the Chromebooks. Uh, if, if you have some specific ideas there, I'm, I'm happy to pass those along to the product managers. Great, thanks everyone. Hey, thank you, Andy.